You want my thoughts on game anti-cheats? If your game has an anti-cheat, I'm just not playing it. Fuck you. I'm not playing it. I, I don't generally game. The gaming that I do these days is either emulators or visual novel style games that are free. Um, or name your own price on itch.io. I, I will probably never play an online multiplayer game again. Because I'm not going to set up an account... Like, it was one thing back in the day when, like, with Unreal Tournament or StarCraft, you could set up a LAN game, you could set up your own server, but this shit where it just goes through these major gaming companies that want you to install stuff that's basically a rootkit on your computer, and, like, can... No. No. Fuck you. I'm not doing it. If I want to play your game, I'll pirate it. Or, I'll just not play it at all, because I don't care. I don't care if someone that I know likes the game. I don't care. That's, the, that's them. That's their problem. I'm not giving you money to fuck with me. That's what I think about anti-cheats. I understand why they exist, and I don't care. Get your server to not be a piece of shit that accepts stupid inputs. And maybe you won't have that problem, and you won't need to rootkit my computer to enforce your server's problems. And just, no, screw you. I'm not playing. I haven't played a modern game in a while. The most recent, like, I think I've said this before, but the most recent games that I can re recall playing are uh, Portal, 2, Portal 2 and a couple of Senron Kagura games. Uh, and I didn't pay for any of that crap. Um, yeah. Just flying the Jolly Roger. I need to get, like, a pirate flag to hang on that over the other window when I do these streams, don't I? Because that's just it. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested. I, I'm not going to buy a new console. Any console after PS2 is dead to me. I will not buy a Switch. I, I will not buy an Xbox, whatever the fuck the latest iteration is. I won't buy a PlayStation 6 million. I'm not buying a console, period. My PC can do it, all that shit anyway. I'm not buying a console anymore. Um, I'm not. I'm not gaming on my phone because phones suck. I'm. I'm playing classic games, and that's it. And if I play something newer, it's going to be an offline, single-player game. I don't socialize in games. I don't socialize. But I don't socialize in games. I don't care about playing games with someone else. But if I did, I would want to play something that I could play offline with them, like just here in this room. Couple computers on a LAN, that's all I'd want. That's all I'd want. If it phones home, if it requires me to install some driver level shit, some anti-cheat shit, I'm not doing it. If I have to sign up for an account and pay for stuff, not doing it. Microtransactions, not doing it. DLC, not doing it. If I get a game, I wanna own that game. If I don't own that game, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to pay money to someone else for something that I don't own. And that's the thing. Like, why? Why do I pirate everything? Because I own it if I pirate it. Even if I pay for it, I pirate it. <clears throat> and, and that's the thing. Like, if you go, if you go and you get, like, Windows 10, like, say you pay for it. I've paid for way more Windows 10 licenses than I can even count. Um, or 7 and 8 and all that too. I've paid for Windows licenses out the ass over time, right? If I go pay for Windows, they still have mandatory software activation. So, they screw with me if, they, if their server doesn't say that it's okay for me to have it. But I paid for it. It's mine. So, I will go pirate it. I will get whatever. KMS emulators, HWID generators, whatever it takes so that my ability to use what I paid for is not reliant on them deciding I can't use it. Adobe, I paid them. I paid them monthly, $53 a month. I hear it's gone up. For the creative, <clears throat> whatever, creative cloud. For years, I paid that. <clears throat> it got buggier and buggier, and I got pissed off because before I used CC, I was using, um, I was using CS6, and... Uh, I pirated CS6, but then I started paying Adobe. I was like, okay, you've got some really interesting stuff compared to CS6. 
I'll throw some money at you because I see that you seem to genuinely be adding really, really useful features. And over the course of a couple years, I was paying Adobe all this money. And I realized that every time something updated, every time I got a new version of their software or a bug fix, it seemed to make things worse. It actually got worse, if you can believe that. The Adobe Suite got worse. Um, I'm paying them money to give me a, a progressively shittier product. So I was like, fuck this. Why am I doing this? Why? What's wrong with me? Why am I giving you, what is it, 53, uh, 50 times 12 is 600. So it's uh, $636 that I was paying yearly. So I gave Adobe at least $1,200, possibly more to give me software that got worse over time. <clears throat> so, I got all the stuff for 2018. I got all the stuff to remove the activation from 2018, which was the last version that I had paid for. And I ripped it out. I ripped out all the Adobe crap. You know, all the stuff that locks it back to your account, gone. Um, and I actually, this is how I discovered that when you disable the licensing checks in the Adobe stuff, it actually makes the Adobe stuff run better. They literally run hundreds of license checks a second. Um, and by license checks, I mean they ask the licensing library, hey, is the license still valid? There are all these hooks that, oh, you want to like, you know, move a, an item in the timeline or whatever. Oh, we'll do a quick license check. Once you've moved this object in your video timeline, we'll do a license check. Oh, now in, and you might be in the middle of work and have your license get revoked. I mean, it's entirely possible. So, even if I paid Adobe for the stuff, from that point on, I would still pirate it because the pirated version is functionally superior. It was objectively more responsive. <clears throat> when I found that out and that Adobe had dumped up their product with all these license checks and that the pirated version's faster, so this is the thing, like, they do all this stuff to keep you from pirating their software, but the thing is, if someone's hacked it to where you can run it, like, if it's pirated, it runs better. Why would you use the paid product as handed to you if the pirated version runs better? You, you effectively own the pirated version, as in you control it, and they don't control it. You know, why would you not pirate at that point? Why wouldn't you? And the problem is, all these companies that make all these games, that make all these programs, they could get everyone, not everyone, but they could get a lot of people to stop pirating this stuff practically overnight if they offered it at a reasonable price, without bullshit activation, without being crippled by their licensing bullshit. If they actually offered non-subscription, you know, purchasable programs that don't require mandatory activation, that aren't slowed down by activation checks, and that are not buggy, that are... I know, this is a crazy idea, but bear with me, okay? What if, what if software were actually tested and staple. Oh my god. You know, like it used to be back in, say, the 2000s, when the internet, you could not rely on someone having broadband internet in the 2000s. The 2000s were sort of a golden era because not enough people had high-speed internet yet that you could rely on it. You still had to ship a well-tested, bug-fixed, relatively good product because you could not ever count on that customer being able to get updates to it. And you couldn't count on them, you know, you couldn't count on the whole activation thing because, I mean, think about it for a second. You just, the activation thing requires an internet connection and some people still didn't have internet at all. Some artist might want to use Photoshop, may not have internet. And yeah, there was phone activation, but like, especially the early 2000s, you, you had... You saw the beginnings of activation, but most people didn't use it. You, you saw updates over the internet, most people didn't use it. Which meant they had to ship a good product that worked and was reliable because they may never get to ship you another product. 
And that might be the thing that puts a nail in the coffin to where they never buy your product again. Now, they, sh they literally, like, there was a game, I don't remember what it was called, but there was a game that was released, I can't remember what console either. They pushed it to market, pressed discs and everything. People bought them, took them home, stuck them in their Playstations or whatever. And all the disc did was download the game that they didn't have finished in time for shipping. The whole, like, whatever, 600 megabyte game to your hard drive on your console, they never even finished the game. That's how bad things are. They don't even have to finish a product. They don't have to make a product good. They just have to have it exist. And that's the problem. We live in a world now where every product is just good enough that it can exist and be a thing that you can get and maybe use. Nothing has to be polished. Nothing has to be good. Everything's a fucking prototype, and that's the problem. I'm going to stop it there.